All right, now let's start talking about chapter 11, uh, genetics, the fundamentals of genetics, starting with the father of genetics, Gregor Mendel, this um, uh, monk, as we saw in the video, who essentially gave birth to the science of genetics in his study of pea plants, which is essentially the study of how or the, the study of heredity, which is how traits are passed down from one generation to the next. As we saw in the video, back in the day, it was thought that heredity was a blending of the two parents, and so the um, child would be an intermediate of the two parents. So if you had a really tall parent and a short parent, you would have some median height kid um, or if they one had light hair and one had dark hair they would have some intermediate color of hair um, but as Mendel discovered genetics and heredity is is uh, due to these traits or factors as he called them that have a discrete uh, nature that are passed down um, he did not come up with the term gene, but he essentially um, discovered genes, if you will. Um, all right, so he worked with the pea plant in the garden there at the monastery, and it was a good choice because the pea plant has some nice, discrete, single gene traits, for example, flower color. They're either purple or they're white, nothing in between. And um, so, or they're tall or they're short, or they have green seeds or yellow seeds, as we see in the table down here, or round seeds or wrinkled seeds, etc. Nice, discrete, single gene traits. Um, so he had to carry out fertilization of the flowers or through pollination. And um, because the flowers of pea plants are hermaphroditic, that is, they are both male and female, he had, with some of the flowers, he had to remove the male parts because he did not want that flower to pollinate itself. He wanted to be able to cross-pollinate it, as is seen here, with another plant. So, on, for example, this purple flowered plant, he removed the male parts of the flower and then transferred the pollen from the white flowered plant to the purple flowered plant. Okay. Um, so fertilization is just when, and pollination is the way, pollination, pollination, is the way it happens in plants, and that's when the female gametes get together with the male gametes, basically the eggs from the female and the sperm cells from the male, and, of course, you get the next generation. So he was looking at these particular traits or characteristics of the pea plant. And again, they were all single gene traits. So there's a single gene that's responsible for the shape of the seed, another gene responsible for the color, another gene responsible for the color of the seed coat, and another gene responsible for pod shape, etc. He started with what we would call true breeding plants. And so, for example, if he had a batch of purple plants and a batch of white flowered plants, if he were just pollinating amongst all the purple plants, every generation after that, they would be purple. And the same with the whites, they would be white. Um, as we've discovered through our studies, essentially these individuals would all be, say, um, homozygous, big P, big P. And these guys would be little P's, little P's. So true breeding is when amongst a group of individuals with a particular uh, characteristic, all the subsequent generations are the same. They're known as true breeding. When you cross true breeding lines, you create hybrids. Um, so if we cross purple and white individuals, we will create hybrid individuals. In this case, they will be big P, little P, for example. 
All right. So, like I said, essentially Mendel discovered genes, although he didn't coin this term, and he figured out that genes come in different forms. Um, now, genes have particular locations on a chromosome. So here's a pair of chromosomes with the same genes on them. And you can see the P gene is in a particular location, and the A gene is in a particular location, and the B gene as well. But now, now we have two copies of each of our genes, because you'll recall we have 46 chromosomes, and they come in 23 pairs. So we have a pair of the number one chromosome, a pair of the number two, three, etc. And so here's a pair of the B genes, a pair of the A, a pair of the P. They're on different chromosomes, but they're on the same location on each of their chromosomes. So uh, these forms of genes are known as alleles. And um, so we can see with the P gene, each of the two chromosomes has the same allele. They each have the dominant form, the big P. In that case, we would call them homozygous or homozygous dominant. For the A, both copies are of the recessive form, so we would call them homozygous recessive. But for the B, we'll no you'll notice that one chromosome has the dominant form, the big B, one has the recessive form, the little b, and therefore, for the B gene, this individual is heterozygous. So for some genes, you can be homozygous, some you can be heterozygous. Um, amongst the homozygous, you might be homozygous dominant or homozygous recessive. So this was another thing Mendel discovered, the idea of dominant and recessive genes or dominant and recessive alleles. All right, so he also discovered what we call the law of segregation. And so what is it? So when we look at, let's look here on the left, these two individuals, they're both tall plants, but notice they're heterozygous. They're big T, little t. So the law of segregation states that when this individual is going to make gametes, each of those gametes only gets one copy of each gene. So while the parent has two copies of the T gene, the gametes they make, as we see here, only get one copy. They either get a big T or a little t. And the same with the other parent, big T, little t. So what happens when all the gametes of these two parents get together? Well, you'll see that you can make all possible combinations in those offspring. That is, you'll have some offspring that get big T, big T, okay. Some, and let's just call this, just for argument's sake, the dad plant and this the mom plant. And you'll notice that sometimes they get a big T from the dad plant, but a little T from the mom plant. And sometimes they get a big T from the mom plant and a little T from the dad plant. And sometimes they get a little T from both parents. So you get all possible combinations in the offspring. And this is due to the law of segregation, the fact that these two alleles segregate or separate from each other when individuals are making the gametes, which essentially are the reproductive cells, again, eggs in females and sperm cells in males. Okay, so there is section one of chapter 11.